Hey there, welcome to today's tutorial. In this one, I'm going to show you a simple example of how to do a drop down button because I remembered that when I was first learning Flutter, I kind of found it confusing and the videos that I found online were kind of also a little bit, a little bit confusing, at least as a beginner. And I'm pretty much just going to show you this right here that is already here is pretty much the, um, the code that you will find in the official documentation of the drop down button. However, since I remembered that I found that to be very complicated, I'm just going to show you a different way to do it. And this way that I'll show you will also work if you want to have your, your basically this list in a different page from where your drop down is using, you know, the provider package, for example, or some other way to do it. Because when you're making a real app, you're probably going to want to organize your app in that way. But anyway, let's get into it. So here we have the drop down button. And basically what's going on here is in the value, you need to have a predetermined value. It doesn't have to be a variable. I could literally just do this instead. It will be okay. So it's up to you what you want to do. However, it's very important that this right here, you should, you should consider it basically the, the default value that will be here. Okay. It's the first one that will show without the user interacting with it. And that's pretty much what the value is. However, this value right here, in this case, it's 1000. It needs to be the exact same value as whatever the first item is on your list of items. Okay. So let's say I just take this out. If I say this now, you're going to, it's going to crash. It literally says right here, there should be exactly one item with drop down buttons value 1000. So if we go back to this, of course it works, but you might be wondering what if it's not the first entry or if it's the second entry, why not try it out just so I can show you hit the save button and now it's better, right? However, it doesn't make sense because if you click it, then this is the order. So, you know, do whatever you want with this information but it should make more sense to do it this way. Like the first item should be the same as the value because once again, the value will always be the default value that, that will be first shown to the user before they interact with the drop down button. But anyway, going back to what used to really complicate this for me is what goes on items. If you use control Q to see this, it tells you the type is list drop down menu item. And then it says string because I already specified it, but it doesn't have to be string. Like if I change it over here to int, then over here it will say int. Okay. So keep that in mind. But basically it's a list of type drop down menu item. And that used to be very confusing for me. And then when I saw this example, it would make no sense to me because it's a list, right? And then you map it with the right type, of course. And then, you know, through the map, of course, now I understand this, but through the map, it iterates it and then you make it a list. However, for a beginner, this might sound a little bit confusing. So let me go ahead and show you an easier and slightly more simple example to understand. And also by doing it this way, you don't have to have the list here. You can have it in a different page or like I'm about to do, you can have it over here, which will of course make the code cleaner. Here it is. And I'm going to call it numbers because they're multiple numbers. So basically this will be, you know, one number and the whole list is numbers, so plural. Keep that in mind because it will be relevant in a little bit. So now that we have this, we can pretty much go ahead and just remove this because we don't really, you know, we don't need it. We can just get rid of it. So what goes here now is probably what you're wondering. And we're pretty much just going to create our own method that returns exactly what this requires, which is a list of drop down menu items. So after grabbing that, I'm going to come over here, do this, and I'm going to call it get numbers list. This is the name of the method. And then, you know, the typical method format, just in case you're still confused, this is just the type that the method will return. This is the name of the method. And this is the body of the method right here. And right now it's red because we need to return something. So if I do this, everything's better now. Not okay, but better. The first thing I'm going to do here is grab this and use it to create a new list within the method. And that list will be empty. However, I forgot to give it a name. I'm going to call this drop down items because essentially it's what it's going to be. And now, as you noticed before, 
we were using the dot map to iterate through it. And in this case, I'm going to use the for in loop, basically. And I'm going to do for, and now the type will be string because that's the type of the list that we're working with. And here, I'm going to define the name of each of these strings, basically. So I'm going to call it number since the list is called numbers. So I'm going to use the singular, right? And this is the plural. And then I say in numbers. That's how it works. So just to reiterate, this is referring to this list and this here is referring to each individual item of this list. And then you just open up some curly braces. And in here, I'm going to create a new var and I'm going to call it new item. And this new item will pretty much represent each one of these items of the list, as in it will be the literal representation on the build method. If you're confused, just watch what I'm about to do. You need to do drop down menu item, and this is a widget, of course. And as a widget, of course, it has a child. And I'm not going to get too complicated, but you can know you could do a container and then give it a background color or something. You know, you can play around because you know this is just for how you know it. So you can do a container and then give it a child, and then a, 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 that child can be a center widget, etc. I'm just going to go for the text. And here I'm going to use the number variable because I want each of these to be represented right here. And now there's another property that's called value. Now, as you can see, it's just type object. Okay. So and over here, let's put number and I'll come back to this in a little bit. But the most important part here now is within the for loop still. Okay. You, you grab this right here, the drop down items, which is the new list we created within the method and you do add and then you put in this right here the new item so basically what's going to happen is this will loop for as, as many items this list has so in this case it has five items so it will loop five times so basically what's going to happen is for string number in numbers it's going to create this new item with this information first and then it's going to add this to this new list right here which is empty okay so basically you know one iteration happens it adds this Another iteration happens, it adds, it adds the 2,000, and so on, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, and then it's over because that's all the items in the numbers list. That's why it says for, you know, string numbers, that basically just the elements in numbers, okay? So that's the amount of times it will iterate. And each time it iterates, it adds the new item over here, so in the end, all of the items will be in this list, and you can return the drop-down items list. And now we can grab this. Let me delete this and put it over here on the items, basically. And everything is okay. Now, let me just save and let's see what happens. I'm going to restart just so it doesn't keep this open. Here we go. Uh, I'm going to click it and they're all here, right? And so, as you can see, the font size is smaller. So, let's just go ahead and style this. Put it with 20, hit the save button, and now it's bigger. And now you still might be confused because you have the child here. We also have the value here, right? So let's go ahead and try to change this. Say hello and restart it. What happens now? You click it and they all say hello. So you need to understand that what is going to be displayed is the child. And the value is just what Flutter needs to know about the item that makes it unique. Sometimes it will be the index of it. This value here, the goal is for you to put in here what differentiates each element from each other. In this case, we're working with strings, so basically just putting in the string would work. However, if you have a different type of list, which is your own type, for example, let's say we have a custom type called custom type. In this case, if this didn't work for you, you should just go for the index of, like you just do the list and then index of, and over here you would put number, and basically you would get the index of each element to separate them. So it, depending on the type that you use for your drop-down menu, you might have to use the index, or you might just go ahead and use the element itself, and it'll work to separate it from the rest. But what I want you to make sure I, you understand is that this is what gets represented, okay? And that's why you need to use the variable number. Otherwise, all of your elements will be the same. They will be hello. So you need to do this like this. And you know, I can't actually do what I just told you 
because I'm working with strings and this would break it all because this is a nint and this is now expecting a string. So yeah, it's a bit complicated, but basically what you need to understand is always go with what I just showed you like this. If it doesn't work, then you probably need to use the index of the element over here. And as you can see, this is a completely, you know, independent. So you could just take it, put it in a, in a different page and then access it over here. And that will be it. This will be a, your drop down. So basically, I hope this was able to help someone out there understand how drop down buttons work a little bit better. If it did help you at all, please hit that like button. And if you're new to Flutter, feel free to subscribe so that you can keep on learning more and more about Flutter. Thank you so much for watching. This is Flutter Mentor and out. Mm -hmm.